My name is Jeff Kynard. I'm a software engineer at Google. I've been primarily working on Dataflow templates and then more recently on what I'm going to talk about today, which is BMML. So a little agenda for you. We're going to talk, do a little introduction on what BMML is, its purpose, and how it fits into the Beam ecosystem. We'll go over some basic syntax. I'm not going to do a deep dive. This is just an overview over what it is and how it works. Some of our current turnkey transforms and how you can get started with a pretty basic pipeline. Then I'm going to do a use case. It's not a real use case, but it simulates what one might do to develop a pipeline. And then finally, how to actually run a pipeline. So to get started, the question at hand is, how do we make Beam easier? I think anyone who's ever used Beam thinks immediately, wow, this is really cool. Let's me do all this you know, data transformation. But then when they actually go to write it, they're like, this is incredibly difficult to use. And there's been a lot of ways we tried to solve that problem. We have multiple SDKs, Python, Go, um, TypeScript, or even Swift, as you saw in the presentation before. Um, but this still requires programming experience. Uh, you need to know the programming language, and you still need to know the Beam model. Another solution we tried with Beam SQL, something that still exists in the Beam ecosystem, in an effort to convert data engineers who are already familiar with SQL. Some of the limitations here are, of course, there's performance limitations. It's known for having some hotkeys with certain transforms. Syntax limitations, there are cases where it doesn't go one-to-one, -one and you have to make modifications to your SQL, which further enhances performance. And it is deprecated. And when I say deprecated, it is in the Java SDK, but it doesn't really have a lot of current investment in some of the data flow integrations that have since been removed. And last but not least, data flow templates. This is a great solution for those that can find a template that fits their use case. This is limited, of course. Most templates go from some source to some sync, PubSub to BigQuery, GCS to PubSub, whatever. And that's great if it works for your use case. If it doesn't, you have to add some sort of intermediate transform or use some sort of source or sync that isn't already in the template's repository. I have to basically clone the entire template, build the template's repo, stage the templates. It's a pretty big mess just to make a small tweak. So that's where Beam YAML comes in. Beam YAML is Beam's newest SDK, and I call it an SDK, but one major difference I want to point out is it's not a programming language. It's very much a descriptive format, if you will. And so by using YAML, it not only allows us to build pipelines in a format that pretty much any developer or even non-developer has seen at some point, but it also allows us learning the Beam model and its inner working, setting up a development environment, and even you know, setting up dependencies and what have you. And then it also allows you to easily copy, modify, and share these pipelines. You can create little YAML snippets, share it across your org without having to mess around with programming languages. So some of the goals of Beam YAML's design, it is a schema first design, essentially. If you've heard of the Beam Rel, it's just a way to structure your data such that it basically models that of like a JDBC database row or an Excel spreadsheet row. But we do want to allow for schemaless. We'll allow for transforms that don't necessarily have to have a schema. We want to deliver the main Beam functionality. This means IOs that are already built in the Beam, windowing, turnkey transforms, um, all the things that make Beam great. We want to have robust error handling on a per transform basis. This means if my transform you know, has some sort of error, we want to be able to pipe that into a downstream transform with relative ease. We want to have easy syntax, syntactic sugar, all the things to, that, that makes constructing it actually an easy process. Yeah, built-in transforms. We want to have any of the built-in transforms already in Beam um, supported, or at least the major ones, um, with even some specialized ones just for Beam YAML. One minor note, because we're supporting multiple IOs, multiple transforms, we do have multiple implementations, sometimes in Java and Python, and Beam YAML does want to abstract this away and treat it as just, it's a transform, it's a black box, don't worry about its implementation. So let's yeah, get started with a very simple example. So say I have a PubSub to BigQuery pipeline, like here, like I have here, visualize on the right. I can specify my source, read from PubSub, and my sync, write to BigQuery. Every transform will have a configuration for PubSub. You know, it might be your subscription, your format, your schema, and BigQuery, your table, or your query, and you'll specify, specify those accordingly. But this looks very much like a template. We have PubSub to BigQuery templates. So what makes this different? Unlike a template which would only ever do pubs up to BigQuery, I can go ahead and I can show I can show a transform in between relative ease. I just submit a new block 
and it should just run. Many of your transforms can be chained, so this just means like I can make this as long as I want. I can just keep chaining transforms like this indefinitely. Just keep specifying the type of transform. All of our previous examples showed linear cases, but what if I want to create more complex transforms or pipelines? Maybe I want to join multiple sources. We do have syntax for that. You would just name the input wherever you're reading from. Like I said before, we want to have sophisticated error handling. So in this example, let's say I have my map transform. Oh, that's actually an error. So imagine the error handling tag here is actually under map to fields. <laughs> but basically, any errors that get you know, thrown by the transform will be piped out to this error tag, which I can then consume downstream, in this case, write out my errors to JSON. Um, OK, so some current turnkey transforms. I'm not going to go over all of them. We have a lot. Um, a lot of them are IOs, so your read from PubSub, your write to Avro, your read from GCS, what have you. Uh, we do a full list, so definitely check it out. But some of our more intermediate transforms, the, you know, the things you would actually put inside of your pipeline, so we have multiple utility ones, some mapping ones for like mapping new fields in your data, aggregating, so doing some different combinations, like you know, summing on a field or finding the mean of a field. We do have ML either here or on the way. ML transforms should be in the next release with enrichment and run inference not far behind. So stay tuned for those. And then, of course, we have some other helper ones like the SQL transform is supported and join. Here's an example because I'm trying to do mostly an overview of Beam YAML with a more in depth talk to be had tomorrow. I'm not going to go over the inner workings of how the transform works, but as you can see, it's as simple as defining the config. So for map to fields, that's specifying a language and its fields that you're trying to map. And we try to keep it as YAML friendly as possible with any of our turnkey transforms. Okay, so I do wanna go over a use case and like how as a developer or even a non-developer, but someone that's familiar with data or at least their data would go about actually constructing one of these pipelines. So in my fake use case, I am a department store, JCPenney's clothes, what have you. And let's say I have a database that stores every transaction that you know, we've ever made. In this case, a transaction ID, our product, the category, like the department that it fits in, and its price. I take that, I store it in my SQL, and it's just kind of sitting there. It's now the end of the fiscal year, and we've decided that we need to audit. Uh, so the electronics department has decided they need to audit. And so basically, I need to take my data, I need to pull out any of those rows that apply to electronics. You can see some of them on here. And then I need to write out to the CSV. This is government work, so it's not high tech. So how would this look in Beam YAML? I would read from my SQL in this case, filter again on electronics, and then write out to a CSV. So translating that to actual YAML code or YAML syntax, you can see we have a read from my SQL. My configuration is my connection details. So in this case, it happens to be URL, my table, my login credentials. From there, I'm passing it into a filter transform. Filter and some, a lot of our other mapping transforms do support multiple languages. But here, I just decided to go with Python to keep it simple. So I'm filtering based on if my category is electronics. Um, so that's what's happening there. And then finally, I write out to my sync. In this case, it's CSV. So I just define my path, which in this case, I just called it electronics.csv. So how does that actually look when I run it? Well, taking the data that we saw before, I should not see anything other than electronics on this table, which I don't. So we've successfully filtered out all of our results. All right, so fast forward. Now it's the beginning of the next fiscal year, and we've decided that we need to order more inventory. So we need to figure out how much product that we sold last year so we know how much to buy for this year. So because YAML does allow you to just insert new transforms without having to like rewrite your whole pipeline, we're able to just take, you'll notice, the three previous transforms and just stuff a transform in between. Um, so in this case, we want to do an aggregation. We want to count the number of products that we sold per product. So not only filter for electronics, but then count each individual product. So walking through that, we've got, again, the read from my SQL with this login credentials. We then pass that in to filter, where we filter on electronics. 
here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. This is our combine, which is kind of our one-stop shop for aggregations. In this case, we're grouping on product name. So if I kind of flip back to our data, our product name is the actual like name of the product, right? So we're grouping on that. For each product name, we're going to do a combination, which is what connect tag is combined. And we're going to say we're adding a new field, the number sold, and that's going to take in our product name and count. So you'll see the function is count, the value is product name. There's some syntactic sugar to make this a little bit simpler. We could actually just inline it on num sold, but we'll see that later. And then of course, writing the CSV. So similarly to the last example, we have our already filtered data on the left there with our aggregated data on the right. So let's see, we got two headphones here. So we should have two headphones on our right table. We do, we only have one monitor. So we have one on the right side. The thing to note here is you can kind of keep doing this, right? I decide, oh, well actually now, and it doesn't even have to be the same org. Maybe us as the electronics, we come up with the solution. Now we have someone else, like another team in the org, maybe household goods, and they have a, a different demand. Maybe they want to do some sort of aggregation on revenue. So maybe they have another table in Postgres that describes, you know, for each product ID, this is how much it cost us. Um, so that they can do aggregations to figure out like how much revenue they got. I'm not going to keep going, but the message here is we can just keep chaining these transforms. It can make pretty complicated shapes with relative ease and adapt and evolve our pipeline as needed. So kind of finally, how do we actually run a pipeline? There's multiple ways. If you're a Dataflow user, we have a nice and friendly gcloud command. So gcloud dataflow yaml run, and then we pass in our yaml file supporting you know pipeline options thereafter if we're running locally this is really currently the only way to use other runners other than dataflow so if i wanted to you know use flink runner i would do python name of the module yaml pipeline file and then i could set the runner and this would of course work with dataflow too another thing i want to highlight the dataflow job builder this is dataflow's newest tool for constructing pipelines completely backed by beam yaml it allows you to use a subset of turnkey transforms that we've gone over and construct your pipeline in a graphical sense. So I could select the source, maybe read from GCS in this example, put in my bucket name, or maybe I have some intermediate transforms for each one. I put in the different parameters and then finally my sync. And then there would be a run button that's not in, in frame. And it's as simple as that. It does not have every single feature of YAML. I'm giving a talk tomorrow that goes over some of the more advanced features of YAML that are not fully included as of now at least. But this is a good way to get started and even has support for loading YAML files and saving your pipeline to YAML. Some more information, getting started, docs, catalog, these slides. So check that out. And then, yeah, that's, that's it.